Welcome to the next episode of vSphere Breakroom Chats. I am Shobhit Bhutani, Product Marketing Manager at VMware, responsible for messaging and positioning of vSphere, AIML, and DPUs. In this series, we bring VMware and partner experts to talk about uh, vSphere and the associated cloud products. Uh, these fabulous experts also share their backgrounds, industry trends, and general tips for technical experts and our customers. Uh, today, I'm very excited to talk to Jim Brogan. Jim was here with us almost a few, six months back, right, Jim? Here or take? Yeah, I, that sounds about right. Yeah, and uh, very successful episode. He was talking about an AML application, but now we're here to talk about something different. Uh, but uh, Jim, you want to take a quick, like a minute or so to just kind of introduce yourself and what you're doing at VMware? Okay. Uh, I started my career as a hardware engineer on mainframe computers. I moved to software engineering uh, on storage systems. For several years, I worked as a field applications engineer at uh, simulation and silicon startups. I joined VMware about four years ago when they acquired Bitfusion, which virtualized GPUs. And today I am in technical marketing. I am an architect and I work on AI, ML, and on DPUs. Uh, as far as beverages go, let me prepare. I, I'm all about uh, hydration. And when plain old water gets uh, gets boring, then I go for the uh, the carbonated stuff. And hopefully you can see some of that there. Fantastic. And I'm a coffee guy. I'm not as, as healthy as you are, man. I drink like several cups of coffee a day, and here's yeah, that's what I'm doing today right now, man. Uh, so right. fantastic. Um, I'm excited to do this episode with you today, Jim. Um, it's been a while, uh, like I was saying, you've been since you've been on this uh, recording with me. Um, can you um, like tell me? You, you mentioned you're working on DPUs in AML, right? A lot yep. of cool things are happening in the DPU space, particularly, right? Can you share, uh, you know, some of the infrastructural challenges that customers are facing today, and why is this conversation important to them? Okay, so uh, a long time ago, before you were born and before I was born, uh, something like a payroll application could run on a single computer as long as it had a tape drive and a printer. Uh, but modern applications are split into tens of pieces or hundreds of pieces running on separate machines. Uh, the storage itself is distributed. Uh, you're accessing the, the internet and you're getting attacked by bad actors. So the infrastructure, that all, everything that connects all of these pieces is incredibly important. The communication has to work. So what we're seeing is that customers need more bandwidth and lower latency. They need accelerators increasingly, uh, certainly in, in machine learning, they need it, but just for the networking, if you can do lookups, if you can do the, the signatures, if you can do the encryption and the in, in, in compression, uh, all of that uh, really benefits from acceleration and lets the application focus on the application stuff not on communicating with other parts of the application. Resources are constrained as they have been since uh, prehistoric times. We always want to do more work with less hardware. And uh, customers need more and more security. We want zero trust. We want micro segmentation. We want, the, we want everything isolated from the things that it doesn't need to work with. Uh, all of those have to be implemented, and the data centers are more and more dynamic. They're elastic. You need more virtualization to support that. You need better management and lots of monitoring. So those, those I think I mentioned about five things that that are are big requirements for our customers and not always easy to achieve. the The DPUs put a lot of this intelligence off of the main processors and onto network cards, smart network cards, or data processing units, where we get the acronym DPU. Perfect. Now, you started what, talking us through a little bit of the DPU functionalities, right, of what, what they do. Um, 
you know, vSphere has had, had, has had DPU capabilities since the launch of vSphere 8, about a, what, nine months back, give or take. Uh, can you share some of the newer features that have been added since then? What we what we've been focusing on are adding uh, more partners and more support. We are running NSX on the DPUs, and we are excited to announce that Lenovo and Nvidia and we have uh, have now are now supporting this vSphere and NSX on the DPUs on Lenovo's Think Agile VX series using NVIDIA's Bluefield 2 DPUs. So these DPUs have dual network ports, the 25 gigabit ethernet ports. They have an array of ARM cores and lots of the built-in accelerators. So every time we add a new partner and a new partner server, we deliver another proven solution for the, the uh, what we call the vSphere distributed services engine. And this takes services such as network services, NSX, and instead of running them on the ARM core, we run them on the DPU. So vSphere with DPU appears as a single host to vCenter and, and to other software. We are, we are not trying to make more and more instances. Uh, we're not trying to make the hosts look like anything other than the traditional hosts, even though they are running two instances of VSX, one on the DPU and one on the traditional host. So uh, we work with the partners to make sure that this integration, so you have a, a single host uh, rather than these, these multiple hosts uh, with, within the, uh, the, the box uh, that is the, the server. We don't want customers to have to learn a new workflow. So we're uh, we're very happy to to welcome the Lenovo Think Agile VX to the family. The uh, other thing we could talk about is the AMD DPUs. They um, they acquired the Pensando DPU and uh, leverages uh, those those two leverage each other and uh, and make a, a strong player in the uh, in the in the market. I've been working on on smart NICs and DPUs for at least ten years. Uh, always waiting for that knee in the curve. Uh, there are an increasing number of players, and uh, we think the Pensando is going to be uh, a very good one. It has the uh, the speeds and feeds we want. Uh, its uh, its driver is uh, is very easy to to install. Uh, since it runs ARM cores, its uh, its software stack is. And software development uh, tooling uh, is supported by an entire industry. And we've supported these Pensando cards uh, from the very beginning of the distributed services engine, but we do want to emphasize uh, that customers have options when it comes to DPUs and they should weigh them and figure out what, uh, what, serves, uh, what serves their needs best. Uh, we work with partners to make these ready nodes for distributed services engine. We don't want any confusion or complications introduced as you're getting introduced to a new product. So the ready nodes have the DPUs and the software and the host server uh, all guaranteed to be uh, compatible. Uh, everything is uh, pre-installed and working. In the case of the AMD Pensando DPU, uh, both Dell and HPE have ready nodes ready to go. Fantastic. Now, um, we always like to do, you know, some demos, et cetera, on the show. Um, what does vSphere DPUs look like? Can you show me a demo of that? Yeah, uh, happy to. So I am going to uh, share uh, a couple of slides and then uh, then some, some uh, pre-captured uh, screenshots. So just to, to reiterate uh, what distributed services engine it, uh, is, it works on a server that has a traditional x86 processor plus a PCIe card, a smart NIC or a DPU that has a processor of its own. And what we see is that something like NSX no longer has to run on the main processor. It can run in the network and a network uh a network service is now running in the network on the ARM core. Now, 
we have to run in order for to move NSX, we have to run ESXi not only on the processor, we also need to run it on the uh, the DPU. So we are going to in boot storage, we will uh, write now two images of ESXi, one on the uh, on the main server and one on the DPU card uh, itself. So this is what we're going to do. And what we what I want to demonstrate is that even when it comes to something like installing ESXi, even though it's in two places, we want our customers to uh, have the traditional experience. We don't want them to have to be aware more than necessary that there are two of these installations going on. On a, on a regular server without a DPU, uh, we can take the console and present it to customers through the board management computer. The board management computer is, is one that comes up even before you power on the server and it gives customers access uh, through a web interface to the, uh, the server and they can get access to the console. And we can all, the customers can also remotely take a, something like an ISO image, a, a, an image of a, of a CD or DVD, and present that as a boot drive uh, to the x86. So on this boot drive, this virtual boot drive, you would have a program that installs VSXI, and you'd also have a copy of VSXI. So there are three steps to install this. You boot and run the installer software. Uh, it's to install ESXi, but it is not ESXi. Uh, the installer will then burn ESXi into the boot image, and then it does a boot a second time, this time booting from the uh, the actual physically present boot device, and it boots up ESXi. And we want to make this exactly the same even on servers with, with DPUs. So now we have two processors, two boot devices. We still have a virtual boot drive still has the ESXi installer. It still has the ESXi image that will burn into the uh, the, the server host, uh, but it also has an ESXi image uh, suitable for the DPU. It'll be uh, compiled uh, for the ARM cores, for example. And it still uses the three steps. You boot and run the installer code. You burn the image into the boot device for the server, and simultaneously you'll burn the image in uh, to the DPU boot device, and then you reboot, and now you're running ESXi in both places, the uh, two instances. So uh, let me let me move to to the other thing I want to share. The other half of this uh, this demo. This is a video capture. I'm going to I'm going to use these controls and step through. The first thing the customer will do, assuming that they have a copy of this installation image with the installer and the EXSI images, is they will log in to the board management computer on a Dell server that, that BMC is called an iDRAC uh, for the integrated Dell remote access uh, controller. And uh, I'm going to fast forward through the login. And uh, this is the dashboard of the of the iDRAC. And you'll notice on the lower right, you have a virtual console like we showed in the slides. So you'll go through that. And then you are going to go through the process of uh, finding your ISO image. And this uh, creates the virtual boot drive. And you have to map it. And you have to say that's what you want to boot from. And then you're going to uh, power on the system. All right, now, uh, as we continue to uh, to fast forward, you can see what we're booting up here is not ESXi. We are booting up the installer and the installer will install ESXi. That's uh, a fine point that can't be made enough. Uh, once, that, uh, once that comes up, we are now running the installer and very quickly we get to the single place where the installation process is different. Here we have two checkboxes. And the only difference to a user uh, installing ESXi in one of these servers is you need to check both checkboxes. You need to say, I'm installing ESXi on both the host uh, and, on, and on the DPU card. So um, after that, it's the same as before. 
you're going to indicate uh, which boot device you want to burn ESXi in on the main processor. You don't have to say where you want to burn it in on the DPU. There's only one place, so we take care of that for you. Uh, later on in the installation process, and all of this is, is the same, you're going to confirm that uh, you're installing ESXi in both places, uh, but it's still a, a single button to, to click. And um, after this boots up, uh, you'll end up on the splash screen of ESXi. We've gone through that second boot. We are now running ESXi on both the DPU card and on the main processor. Everything after that is the same. You configure networking for the main processor. The networking configuration for the DPU is uh, fixed, and that happens under the covers. And the two instances of ESXi. Uh, communicate with each other and appear, uh, except where where you really need to know that there's two of them. It appears as a as a single server. So that's um, that's the main point I wanted to make with uh, with this demo, is that it's still a single server and you can deal with it as a single server, uh, except for the places where it's very important to know that uh, there are DPU. Uh, capabilities uh, available. Fantastic, Jim. Demos are always cool to have, um, you know, really cool to watch. Like what I loved about the demo you just gave, right? The simplicity of it all, right? One click, two clicks, or, you know, just a very, very few clicks to get to your full you know, install of the ESXi on your DPU, uh, you know, and then all the other benefits, right? Like easy life cycle management, you didn't have to do much extra to get ESXi installed. So thank you for that. Really, really cool demo, Jim. Yeah, you're welcome. This is a, sort of a, a nice low level demo, but you can yeah. imagine how this would percolate up if you're working with a life cycle manager and stuff. Everything's in place just to keep it simple. Fantastic. What I will offer up to the audience here to uh, Jim's point is a website, uh, vmware.com slash DPU. This is our product website uh, in which you can, you know, try, go and learn some more about what's going in our going on in our DPU world. Uh, so thank you, Jim. Thank you so very much. Really enjoyed this conversation today. It was great. Uh, great talking to you as well and happy to do it again. Fantastic. Um, so and with that, we're, we come to the end of this episode. If you like this episode, join in for the next uh, next one. This is your host, Shobit and Jim Brogan signing off. Have a fabulous day, evening, night and weekend. Bye-bye uh, till next time. Mm -hmm.